the Palm Beach Civic Association expands its communication outreach with a state-of-the-art television studio. We call it Studio 33480, the zip code for the beautiful island of Palm Beach. Sponsored by Finley Galleries, our goal is to bring you in-depth interviews with the most colorful and knowledgeable personalities on the island. And now, our host. Welcome to Studio 33480. I'm Claudia Shea. The 2023-24 school year is now upon us, and with it, the excitement and promise that a new school year brings for students, faculty, and the community alike. In Palm Beach County, we're really fortunate to have outstanding public schools and private schools. Now, the island's only public school is Palm Beach Public. Today, we're going to be talking with the superintendent about that school and how your tax dollars are spent. Please join me now in welcoming Mike Burke, the superintendent of the Palm Beach County School District. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. How's the school year going? We're only a few days in. Yeah, we're on our third day, but we're off to a great start. Very smooth opening. Before we begin and talk about Palm Beach Public and the tax dollars and all of that, can you give me just some of the, the high points about the district itself? I know that you're the largest employer. I'm Correct. a former empl employee of yours. <laughs> so other than that, what can you tell us about the district? We are large. We are the largest employer in Palm Beach County with over 22,000 full-time employees. Uh, we are the 10th largest school district in the nation with nearly 190,000 students, including our charter schools. And so we're big, you know, we could, geographically, Palm Beach County spans over 2,300 square miles. So we run the largest restaurant program with our school food service. Our school buses are racking up millions and millions of miles a year. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to add a lot of schools. So you just added two new schools this year. Yes, we're up to 182 schools now with a, a brand new high school, Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School in the Western Lake Worth area, and then also a West Point Middle School. And both those f facilities are beautiful, state of the art. Fantastic. So this is an A-rated district. Please talk to us about how that is pretty hard to attain and why it's so impressive looking at the counties surrounding us. Yes, yeah, so the state of Florida has a robust accountability system. It's been in place for a couple decades now. And all of our schools and districts are graded A through F. And you know, A obviously being the best. And so to, to obtain that A rating, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of measures as far as how our students are performing on a variety of tests. Uh, the type of programs we're offering in terms of uh, industry certifications, all these things, our graduation rate. And if you score high enough, you can get that A rating. And it's, it's kind of a big deal. Out of 67 school districts, there's only 14 A's. And then when you look at the large school districts, the large, there's seven we consider large urban districts, there's only two A's. And in Palm Beach County, we're an A. Uh, if you look at the neighboring counties around us, they're either B or C. Congratulations on that. And I know it's been a while, been an A for a while. So we look at individual schools and they are also rated. Palm Beach Public here on the island is an A rated school. So what does it take for an individual public school to be A rated? It's a similar type measurement, but mainly, you know, how are those students performing on high stakes accountability tests at the end of the school year? Let's take a quick break to hear from the principal of Palm Beach Public, Christy Schwab. Hi, I'm Christy Schwab. I'm the proud principal of Palm Beach Public. Let us tell you what's cool about our school. Palm Beach Public is an A-rated five-star school of excellence. We are a small school with a diverse population and family feel. We are a choice school for orchestral strings with approximately 40% of our population playing the violin, viola, bass, and cello. We greet every student as they enter the school building each morning, and then teachers begin morning meeting, which supports social-emotional learning. Every classroom has a smart board, which allows teachers to integrate technology into their lessons and make learning interactive for our students. We have an amazing art program with student artwork throughout the campus. Each spring, we host an art show. Here at Palm Beach Public, we soar in everything we do. F is for scholarly. O is for organized. A is for achieving. Woo! R is for respectful. Good morning, Ms. Schwab. Good morning, Joshua. Thank you for visiting Palm Beach Public, where we are small but mighty. Looks like a great school, and we'll talk more about that orchestral program in just a moment. That school's been here on the island for quite a while. It has. You know, our school just in its entirety was formed in 1909, so we're about 114 years old. And Palm Beach Public's been around over 100 years itself. That's amazing. Okay, let's talk about the district's budget and how specifically Palm Beach 
taxpayers are impacted. I know as a whole you have a $5 billion budget, but the Palm Beach Civic Association's Tax and Finance Committee, chaired by Mark Zyman, had some questions, mm -hmm. and a lot of these questions also come from the community as well. So this past year, the island of Palm Beach paid approximately $142 million towards public education, and it's anticipated that it'll be 158. Now, considering that there's only one public school here in this zip code, 33480, and um, just about 10% of kids from the island go to Palm Beach Public, and then just a handful to the other public schools, what would you say to residents who say, what is the return on my investment? Yeah, I get this question periodically. Uh, the first thing I usually like to explain is how Florida funds education, because it's different than many other parts of the country, particularly the Northeast. Uh, in Florida, there's a, a funding formula called the Florida Education Finance Program, FEFP. And what it, essentially that does is it collects state sales tax proceeds and then local property taxes dollars, pulls that revenue in, combines it, and then redistributes it on a per student basis of roughly $8,000. So in some smaller townships and other places in the Northeast, I think people are more accustomed to seeing like their property taxes stay within their limited municipality. In Florida, school districts align with the county. So there's 67 counties, 67 school districts. So that revenue that's being collected, the taxes being paid on Palm Beach Island are kind of, they're being collected along with all the other taxes in Palm Beach County. The state legislature actually sets the bulk of our tax rate for us, most required local effort. So all that money is basically coming in to help support funding throughout the state. Uh, there are some components of our taxes in Palm Beach County that stay in Palm Beach County, like our local referendum we'll probably talk more about. But first is that, yes, those dollars along with sales tax money, the 6% sales tax is what really pays for education in Florida. And Florida is a little lean on funding. We are currently 44th in the country out of 50 states. So even though I know I understand the town of Palm Beach is paying a hefty share of taxes, but that does not necessarily mean that we're flush in money. It doesn't mean like Palm Beach Public has got $142 million. It doesn't mean our students are getting a whole lot more money than students that might live in Okeechobee County or Leon County. There's a slogan that you used during the uh, 2018 and 2022 referendum, which taxpayers overall, the most recent one, approved by 74%. Do you know what it was on Palm Beach? In Palm one? Beach, we, uh, it ranged a little bit by precinct from about 56% approval to 72% approval. Okay, and so then you're right, countywide, the approval rate was at 74%, which is very high. That, that's, that's really an indication of strong support. Well, there's a slogan that you use, strong schools, strong communities. So even if you don't have a child who goes to the one public school here, why is it also important to support public education? What does that mean in the big picture? Great question, and that's where I think the benefits really, <laughs> are, you know, are realized. We, that referendum was important. That was a voluntary tax, really, to, to provide better for Palm Beach County Schools than 44th in the nation, and it's doing a lot of good things. But I think it's important to any resident, you know, you, if you have a student in school or not, you know, we need to be able to provide a workforce. And, and that's the mission of our school district, is to preparing tomorrow's leaders and workforce. And so we have a whole host of programs geared towards that, uh, over 330 choice programs at specialty areas from pre-med to IT to s construction, you know, you name it, cybersecurity. We have s so many of them. Um, and I would think that basically to, to live in a nice community, to make sure you're going to be able to go to the get medical services, you know, have a plumber be able to come out and fix your home, um, we, we need to invest, right? We need to invest in the children, and make sure they're prepared for that their career. And that's one of our things. We, we focus on graduating kids that are both college and career ready. Okay, so you mentioned these choice and career academies. So what does that mean if I am maybe interested in automotive or being an attorney or into a med medical field? Does that mean that I can go to a school pretty much anywhere as if I apply to it and get accepted and then get a certificate? Yes. So typically, you know, the first, your home school is basically determined by your address, you know, where you're located, and we have school boundaries. But then beyond your home school, if you're interested in these choice programs, it's an opportunity to apply and hopefully get accepted. You know, sometimes we have limited seats, uh, but if you're accepted, then yes, you can go to that school that offers the program you're interested in. And then a lot of those programs are accompanied with what we call industry certifications, which means that, uh, you know, you take a test, if you pass that industry certification, that you can graduate with some credentials that show that you're well-trained. 
So at Palm Beach Public, there is the orchestral, the strings program. And I know that the Palm Beach School Orchestral Strings Foundation, led by Cassius Johnson, really helps that school out. What is it about that program? Do all children at that school have the opportunity to learn a string instrument? Yes, yes. And uh, that's been a very successful program in place for many years. You know, and there's a lot of research that goes into um, learning an instrument, being able to read music, and how that helps your brain work with dealing with, you know, reading and writing and math and all that. So I think it's a great program and it's very popular. In the referendum that was also, so there were four areas, right, that the, the referendum supports and it's a four-year referendum. Can you explain for us the four areas? Yes, so the first component is what we call the fine arts. Mm -hmm. So it's art, music, PE, uh, career and technical education, choice programs. And we have about 750 teachers that are specialty teachers that support just those programs and their salary is paid for by the referendum. The initial referendum was that was the only piece of it mm -hmm. uh, back in 2014 and we did that coming out of the Great Recession uh, we wanted to make sure the arts were protected because a lot of times when there's a budget downturn those are the things that get sacrificed and we saw that happening around the state and around the country and our school board kind of had the foresight and the wisdom to say look Let's, let's dedicate a revenue source to those programs and make sure that they're always here in Palm Beach County. So we've continued to support the arts and actually expand. Uh, this budget this year we approved $10 million to increase music programs. So we're uh, refurbishing instruments across all of our middle and high schools and creating new programs, kind of like the one at Palm Beach Public, but at additional elementary schools throughout the county. So that's, that's a big bucket, the 750 fine arts teachers. Uh, in 2018, we went to the voters and ask for additional millage to get to the one mill levy to pick up some other really important things. And that include mental health. We wanted to make sure we could put a mental health professional in every one of our schools. We also have co-located therapists at many of our sites to just make sure that kids are, you know, if they need some help, that they had those services. And that was kind of really uh, in response to the Stoneman Douglas tragedy. It's the best prevention is really on the mental health side. And then the other part of that was expanding our police force. So we have a school police officer on every campus, at least one, and we continue to put new layers of security in. Last school year, we started with the Syntegic's hard panic button solution. Uh, this year, we're testing metal detectors at four of our high schools. And with security, our school police chief, Chief Mooney, always tells me, you know, you're never finished. You just have to keep trying to add additional layers of, of security. So uh, you've got the teachers, the mental health, the security, and then the last component, about half the money goes to improve teacher pay. And that's critically important. So, you know, it's, Palm Beach County can be an expensive place to live, and teachers are not, teachers in Florida, particularly some of the lowest paid in the country. So that referendum allows us to retain our teachers. It's based on experience. And after one year of teaching experience, they generate an additional $1,000 a year. When they get to five years, it, it goes up to $5,000 a year. And then at 10 years or more of experience, we pay them an additional $10,000 a year. So considering that, how do you rank among other districts in Florida as far as teacher pay? We're right at the top. Uh, Monroe County, the Florida Keys, is, is the highest. Uh, Collier County, which is the Naples area, is also pretty high, but we're, we're right there in the mix. So July 1st has come and gone now, but before that there was a session that was very robust up in Tallahassee, and a lot of laws were passed impacting education. I see that you brought a couple of books <laughs> with you. What, what is this? This is, uh, yeah, these are my props. So <laughs> this was, uh, as far back as I could find, was the 2012 edition of Florida okay. School Laws. And so, you know, you can see this is, I thought this was a lot of laws back then, but we were coming in at just, uh, around 900 pages. Okay. And then if you if you jump 10 years ahead to 2022, we increased almost 600 pages <laughs> additional law. So that's, I don't know if you can see the difference there, but uh. each each year that goes by, we get more and more legislation. Um, and the past couple of years have been really, they've been incredibly productive in Tallahassee as far as churning out legislation. Uh, and then it's our job to try to implement it all, we're, we're bound to abide by the law. And I've been spending a lot of time as of late just trying to navigate the new legislation and, and also implement it in a manner uh, that's least disruptive to our students and our schools. That, you know, that some of the legislation doesn't always uh, align with kind of our values and <laughs> what we feel like is important here in Palm Beach County. But again, we're, we're kind of forced to abide by it. Um, I'm proud of the job we've done 
like I, if you if you follow some of these issues in the media across the state, you saw districts that were either boxing up their books, closing their libraries, banning books, and we have not banned any books in Palm Beach County. And we've actually, we've continued to offer our classroom libraries, our media centers, and we continue to expand our collection. We're buying more books right now. So let's talk about some of the other laws. One of the big ones that made a lot of headlines was uh, House Bill 1, the one about universal vouchers. Now, vouchers have always been around, but what's different this time? So Florida's on the cutting edge of the voucher laws. Uh, we have had vouchers for several years, different ones that were more uh, either catered to like ESC students or like, the HOPE scholarships. And then we had the, the more newest versions of family empowerment scholarships. But up until this year, there had always been restrictions, particularly around income. So a family had to be, there were di different measures, but they had to be closer to like the average medium income. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you know, now what's passed this year is it's universal, which means there's no income restrictions. Anyone. Any, any, anyone is eligible for the voucher. And so we expect to see, you know, pretty rapid growth probably in the utilization of those vouchers. I recently sat down with Florida Senator Bobby Powell, who represents this area, including Palm Beach, and I asked him if private schools that start accepting this $8,000 FTE money for students will be subject to the same state regulations as the public schools. Let's listen to what he had to say. They're allowed to take this money and continue operating the way they have been. So if these private schools are teaching something that the public schools are not allowed to teach, the private schools can continue to do that. The legislature is not going to interfere with their standards, and they can accept this money and do as they please. With these vouchers, the private schools are not under the same scrutiny. They don't have the same accountability as us. They're not subject to this long list of laws. Right. There is some effort to uh, try to level the playing field. The DOE has created a commission to look at deregulation, so there may be some opportunity for school districts to Rather than putting more requirements on the private schools, they may take some things off of our plate, is the idea anyway. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. You know, a lot of these laws, and you know, I may complain a little bit about that there's too many of them, but a lot of them are in here for a good reason. You know, I think it is important that we operate transparently. I think it's important that kids, parents that send their children to us get some type of assessment and they can you know, be assured what standards are we teaching? How are the kids performing at the end of the year on the test? You know, how did they, you know, what progress was made from the beginning of the year to the end of the year? Do they have a certified teacher in front of them? Our, our school administrators have advanced degrees in educational leadership. Are you feeling the impact yet from this new law that passed? We've, uh, we're monitoring our enrollment really closely. We're in the third day of school. Uh, the numbers are still kind of gelling. And I don't think we'll feel a huge immediate impact, uh, but there will definitely be some impact and then we're going to really work hard to remind people why our schools are your best choice and you know work hard to retain our students the that's the potential impact is if we just lose lose enrollment mm -hmm. uh, if students disenroll from our schools and go to a private school and take the voucher uh, they take the money with them and then you know we could see decline in enrollment we've been really fortunate in Palm Beach County that's not the case our enrollment's been stable we're actually growing slightly from year over year, which is a good thing. So we're going to be working hard just to really hang on to our students and continue to, to attract new ones. Uh, we did a lot of work this year welcoming the class of 2036, which is our incoming kindergarten class. 36. So yeah. Wow. It seems out there a little yeah. ways, doesn't it? <laughs> 13 years of school for the uh, kindergartners, and then they'll be ready to graduate. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, what would you say, besides what we've discussed so far, are some of the challenges, what might keep you awake at night that you're working on, and, and how are you going about trying to rectify? I think the biggest challenge for us is going to be maintaining our workforce as the largest employer. Uh, fewer young people are going into education. So we're getting creative in where we find teachers. You know, a lot of teachers, we get that's a second career, where maybe they started out as an engineer and then later in life decide maybe they'd like to kind of give back to the community and teach math. Uh, we get some great teachers that way. We're also trying to grow our own. So we have employees that are currently a teacher's assistant or what we call a paraprofessional that have two-year degrees. We're looking to partner with FAU and Nova Southeastern University to uh, afford those employees an opportunity, if they wish to become a teacher, that we can kind of help them along through that process and send them back to school. And then also looking at our high school students, we have some teacher academies within our high schools where if the students are committed to becoming a teacher, we can offer them a contract when they graduate and say, you know, come back in four years and we'll put you to work. Um, so I think just recruiting teachers, it's a, there's a national shortage, it's not getting any better, so we're going to have to really work hard at that. Uh, 
bus drivers are hard to find. We'd still like to hire 100 more bus drivers. And we now have a $5,000 signing bonus if someone has the CDL license. $2,500 bonus if they do not have the license, we'll train them and pay them for that training. Um, and we've increased the pay as well. So. And the benefits are good, right? Yeah, we still have really good benefits with health insurance and the Florida State pension. And we're having, we've been busy all summer having job fairs, all that, and we're in pretty good shape. We're in actually, we have fewer vacancies to start this school year than we did last year. Do you get the impression that people just really don't know or misunderstanding about public school and your school district? You know what I find often is, if you ask people about what do you think about public education, Globally, you kind of get like a negative answer, like, oh, it's going downhill, you know, it's not like when I was in school or that type of thing. But then if you kind of zero in a little bit more for someone that has a student in public school and say, well, w w what about your school? Oh, I love my school, you know. Or if you ask them about what about your child's teacher, it's usually a very positive, positive reaction. And I think, you know, most of us have been out of school for a while, and if you're not on our campuses, you don't get to see all the great things going on. Um, any day I get to go into a school and into a classroom, it kind of restores my faith in humanity <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it's just so nice. I mean, the, the kids are happy to be there. They're engaged. The teachers, it's obvious how much they care for their kids and how thoughtful they are and the hard work they're doing. And it's, it's a pleasant place to be. The whole environment, the culture of a school campus is, is, is great for the most part. And if it's not, then you know, we got to fix it. But from what I've seen, it's, it's really a positive experience and uh, I wish more people would uh, kind of have that first-hand observation so that they're not maybe influenced by more of just noise that's out there in the public. Beyond and the, the headlines. Media. Yeah. So if someone watching doesn't have a child in school and they would like to get more involved with your schools, how could they do it? How could they get more involved, for example, with Palm Beach Public? Every school has a school advisory council that's always looking for people to serve on that. Uh, and Sir, School Advisory Council has some input on the school's improvement plan, and they also have a, a small budget allocation they get to work with to try to do things that support that plan. Uh, we also have a lot of volunteers. You know, there's a, a lot of opportunities for, for folks to volunteer at our schools to read to children. Um, and we have an education foundation also that helps raise money and uh, to better support our schools. So I know a lot of the uh, you know, local businesses are, are heavily involved with that. But uh, yes, I mean, please look us up. We have the volunteer coordinator. We could, if that's something they're interested in, or if they'd even consider substitute teaching, driving a bus maybe half a day. <laughs> There's uh, all kinds of opportunities. I remember last year seeing that you uh, visited Palm Beach Public for a very special event. There was an addition of the Ben Carson Reading Room. Can you just briefly dis uh, discuss with us what Ben Carson does, what he contributes, speaking of how businesses help, and why literacy is so important and how this is another factor helping our kids learn? Yes, I've had the pleasure of going to a, two grand openings of, of Dr. Ben Carson Reading Rooms, and it's really nice. They, uh, what they, they completely refurbish a, a given room and turn it into a nice, cozy, like little library reading space with, you know, really well decorated, comfortable chairs, plenty of books. And it's really to just try to help instill that love for reading. And if you can get kids that, you know, enjoy picking up a book, something that they get to select and they're interested in, um, it just makes everything else go so much smoother. So true. Superintendent Burke, thank you so much. I know your schedule is very, very busy, so we appreciate the fact that you've carved out some time to be with us here uh, at the Palm Beach Civic Association, and we wish you a very successful school year. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us right here on Studio 33480. We'll see you next time. Studio 33480 is brought to you by the Palm Beach Civic Association, our sponsor, Finley Galleries, and our viewers. We welcome your thoughts on how our programming can best serve our members and residents.